In the news this week, the Christian Institute's named person win prompts a major change in data sharing policy from a Scottish health board. A government review on gambling could see betting adverts banned from daytime TV. And secularists call for a Christian Air Force officer who cited Jesus as an influence to be visibly punished. Hello. A Scottish health board has announced a change to its policy on data sharing after the Supreme Court victory by the Christian Institute and others against the named person scheme. NHS Tayside was routinely handing out a leaflet to parents, telling them that details about them and their children could be shared between professionals. But after an intervention from a member of the No to Name Persons campaign, the leaflet has been scrapped. Leslie Scott of charity Times Trust wrote to NHS Tayside highlighting the need for action after this year's Supreme Court ruling against the named person plans. She was impressed by the health board's response, but warned that other health boards and local authorities could be breaking the law. We were delighted that NHS Tayside um, took this issue so seriously and that they went away and critically reviewed their information sharing processes in regards to um, children and families' personal information and um, that they've indeed removed the leaflet from circulation. And uh, it's really incumbent upon all private, public and third sector agencies in light of the ruling from the Supreme Court that they turn the same critical eye on their own information sharing processes and um, change them and, and, you know, take away things that are in breach of this rule from the, from the UK Supreme Court. Responding to the news, a spokesman for No to Name Person said the Scottish Government still has more to do. The Scottish Government has spent years encouraging a cavalier attitude to family privacy. Now they've been stopped in their tracks by the Supreme Court, it is really up to them to make sure all public bodies are revising their policies and practices to comply with the court ruling. Betting adverts on daytime TV could soon be banned due to growing concerns that children are being exposed to gambling and see it as normal. An existing government review of fixed odds betting terminals is being expanded and aims to curb gambling in order to protect young and vulnerable people from gambling-related harm. The Department for Culture, Media and Sport recently stated, As it stands, betting sites can basically be advertising to children all weekend. In the last three years, the number of 18 to 24-year-olds with a serious gambling problem has trebled, and according to the Gambling Commission, around 336,000 people in the UK have a severe gambling problem. The Christian Institute's Deputy Director for Public Affairs, Simon Calvert, said the Institute had warned about the effect of weakening gambling laws as far back as 2005. So it was the Gambling Act in 2005 which lifted all these restrictions on advertising. That's why bookmakers can advertise before the watershed. That's why you get advertising for gambling during live sports broadcasts. Now, we wrote this booklet in 2005 and we specifically warned that these changes would lead to adverts appearing everywhere. We said that that would undoubtedly encourage more gambling. And it's frustrating when you say these things and politicians don't listen at the time. But I guess, you know, it's better late than never. Uh, we're glad that the government is now considering restricting these adverts. And it's very important that they do, uh, for the sake of children especially. Calls to weaken Northern Ireland's abortion law have been criticised by a former senior MLA in the wake of a powerful BBC documentary on Down syndrome. Currently, in Northern Ireland, abortion is only permitted when the mother's life is at risk. But in Great Britain, abortion is allowed up to birth if the child is disabled. Writing in the Belfast Telegraph, Alba McGuinness said the pervasive gentleness and love shown in the Sally Phillips documentary had won over viewers. It presented those with Down syndrome as being people, rather than abnormal or odd. But McGuinness also wrote of the concerted effort by some politicians and UK-based pressure groups to weaken the law. Before we modernise our present law and join the progressive ranks of freely available abortion in Western Europe, should we not stop and ask ourselves, does the abortion of seriously disabled babies make the world a better place? And finally, a Christian US Air Force officer has been attacked by a secularist group for citing Jesus as an influence. The Military Religious Freedom Foundation is calling for him to be reprimanded for his comments, made in an article called Meet Your Leadership. When asked a question about his influences, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Kirsten responded, As a Christian, my example is to be like Christ. He is my guide and affects all of my decisions. President of MRFF Michael Weinstein wrote an open letter claiming that the group had received complaints from military personnel regarding the comments. He demanded that Lieutenant Colonel Kirsten be visibly punished and forced to apologise for his remarks. 
Earlier this year, the same group demanded swift, visible and aggressive punishment for another U.S. Air Force officer because he had an open Bible on his desk. The MRFF described that situation as repulsive, sordid and disgusting and claimed it had left 33 families very scared. After a short investigation, it was decided that Major Steve Lewis could keep the Bible on his desk. Well, that's all for this week. For regular updates and information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.